Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. A major storm swept over the Istrian Peninsula today. Four tornadoes were reported in the Medulin area. Pula was hammered with hail and heavy rain. The heaviest precipitation was reported in the Veli Vrhvodnjan region. Firefighters were pumping out water and clearing debris in Pula. Residents of Porec and Novigrad reported some flooding. The Kvarnet region was also hit by heavy rain today. The heaviest downpour, 68 millimeters, were reported near the town of Bakar. This was the scene at around 2 o'clock this afternoon. After more than five months of silence, food and retail tycoon Ivica Todoric is using his blog to present his side of the story about what happened at Agrokor, the heavily indebted company he lost control of earlier this year. Todoric has accused the government of conspiring to nationalize his business empire and called for a parliamentary commission to investigate the matter. In his latest post, he alleges the government obtained company documents without his knowledge that were later used to draft legislation placing Agrokor under a government-appointed crisis manager. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has secured a fourth consecutive term in office. Merkel's Christian Democrats and their Bavarian allies, the Christian Social Union, won around 33 percent of today's vote, making them by far the largest parliamentary group, according to exit polls. Their closest rivals, the center-left Social Democrats, dropped to 20 percent, a new post-war low. Today's election has also brought a far-right party into the German parliament for the first time in more than 50 years. The far-right alternative for Germany finished third with 13.5 percent. No question about it, we had hoped for a better result. That's completely clear. We, the CDU, CSU, are the strongest party. We have a mandate to form a government, and there cannot be a coalition government formed against us. Slovenia's foreign minister has said he expects the European Commission to lean heavily on Croatia after Prime Minister Andrei Plenković's address at the UN General Assembly. Karl Erjavec said that the EC had a number of instruments it could apply to member states that refused to recognize the rule of law to get them to comply. Slovenia insists on the implementation of a border arbitration ruling which Croatia refuses to recognize. Croatia's Prime Minister reiterated this position at the UN on Thursday, prompting his Slovenian counterpart to cancel an upcoming visit to Zagreb. Erjavec says Croatia's cooperation is needed to implement the arbitration ruling, but that Slovenia can put some parts into action unilaterally. Thousands of demonstrators calling for Catalan independence rallied in Barcelona on Sunday in protest of Madrid's actions last week to try and block the October 1st referendum, which it considers illegal. Separatists marched and distributed posters in support of the vote. Polls show Catalonia's seven and a half million residents are roughly split on separating from the rest of Spain. We support independence because we've always been independent. They're tearing our democracy apart because they won't let us vote. We are not allowed to speak up. The town of Pregrada in the western Croatian Zagoria region celebrated the grape harvest today. Grape pickers proudly paraded through the town's center. This has been a rough year for grape growers. Vineyards in the Zagoria region were hit by a spring frost and summer hail. Yields are low this year. However, this has not dampened the spirits of grape pickers, visitors or the organizers of the annual event. There's no better feeling than the beginning of the harvest when we pick all of the fruit. You've put in all that hard work all year. There's no better feeling than the culmination of all that. It's priceless. We've brought this celebration to a close with a special main event. Even the weather has served us well, with a bit of trouble in the beginning, but it turned out okay. I think we attracted a record number of visitors, and I'm very pleased. 6,000 people ran, biked or inline skated today in the Terry Fox Run, the annual cancer research fundraiser at Zagreb's Yarun Lake. The Terry Fox Run is named after the courageous Canadian cancer research activist who has inspired millions to fight against the deadly disease.
The charity has raised more than 6.3 million kuna for cancer research and assistance for cancer patients. It's a great feeling. This is the first race that I managed to win. It's difficult to put into words. This is a charity race. We should have more races like this. Runners also competed in one of Croatia's most scenic and grueling races today, the Stone Wall Marathon, which takes competitors on a trek around the town's ancient stone fortifications. The walls of stone are the second largest fortification system after the Great Wall of China. 140 competitors from 21 countries rose to the challenge this year. Spain's Antoni Puig Izquierdo broke the course record this year. Hungary's Katalovas won the women's race. The atmosphere, the people, the place, and uh, the organization, so everything is excellent. I am happy, <laughs> and uh, it is a very, very good uh, race, uh, very interesting, but uh, very hard. Julia Roberts is the latest Hollywood celebrity to be spotted in Croatia. The Oscar-winning actress was in Split, where her husband Danny Motor is shooting the film Ibiza. Motor is director of photography on the project. The 49-year-old named by People magazine as 2017's most beautiful woman in the world also spent time on the island of Kvar in the company of family and friends. In sports, Croatia's women's volleyball team lost their final Group B game to Italy at the European Championships tonight, three sets to two. Favorites Italy took the first two sets despite a strong performance from Croatia. Croatia then stepped up their game and clinched the third and fourth sets, but the decider went to Italy. Both teams had already secured a spot in the next phase going into this match. The top three teams from each group advanced to the elimination round. Tomorrow's forecast calls for mostly cloudy skies with rain, showers, and thunder showers in the interior, especially in the morning. The chance of rain is lowest in the east, while the northern coast can expect the most sunshine. There will be a light to moderate northeasterly on the coast. High gusts are forecast for the north coast and the Velebit area. Dalmatia will start the day with east-southeasterly winds. Morning lows will be between 8 and 13 degrees inland and between 14 and 19 on the Adriatic. The day's highs will range from 14 to 19 in continental Croatia and from 19 to 23 on the coast. The three-day outlook for the interior calls for variable clouds and rain until midweek. Conditions will improve on Thursday, but there could still be some light rain in the mountains. Temperatures will rise slightly as the weather improves. On the coast, it will be sunnier than in the interior and mostly dry. There is still a chance of some local showers on Wednesday in the north and in Dalmatia, especially its far south. Expect light to moderate northeasterly and northwesterly winds. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.